Hello, blue sky, hair, and the red object coming into the view now is cloth, shaded with a balloon shader. We have two hair systems working on that balloon shaded object, round object. And the speciality of this animation is, I mean, it's not uh, terrific or whatever, uh, but the speciality is uh, the constraints I'm using. So here is the scene I want to show you. In the back, you see something which you didn't see in the animation. No, yes you did, because we looked up into the sky. That's the sky, that's the angle of view for our simulation, for the animation I've just showed you. This is the camera here, which I rendered, which is basically slowly moving down. So uh, here we only have the dynamic simulation and the camera basically starts up here and then goes down and gets the whole uh, ribbon and the hair into view. So we don't see anything of this Italian scene, only the sky, which is just uh, nice for this, I think. Let's have a look at the outliner. We have green icons here. That's uh, icons for the constraints. And here we have three hidden cylinders. They are important for this whole animation, but we don't need to see them, finally. So let's first unhide them. Shift-H. The disk is this one. Uh, it, it was a disk, actually, of uh, like uh, this object here. And I just deleted the faces uh, inside to create that ribbon effect. And I turned this ribbon into cloth. And then I introduced the dynamic constraints, not for the hair, but for the ribbon. Um, so um, we have one, two, three, four dynamic constraints. And now have a look where they are. So this pole here, this cylinder, um, deals with this control vertex or uh, vertex point on that ribbon and with that one. So it spans uh, a powerful connection to the to the both sides here. And of course uh, this is it's it behaves like a spring so uh, it is elastic but not too elastic. I could have created springs which do break once they are stretched too far but in this case I didn't allow them to break so they hold the ribbon quite stably. Here's the other one which is more direct and you can see I chose several CVs here, or vertices, uh, not the whole object. And uh, what I used for this constraint is I went to FX, and here you have the N constraint. So we have N cloth in the scene, that's the cloth, the ribbon. We have N hair in the scene, that's the two hair systems here, and we have an N constraint here. And I used the component to component constraint. So just for showing you how the component to component constraint does work, uh, let me introduce a new constraint here. Uh, and we use another cylinder again. This one is a little bit bigger maybe. And now what you do is basically you go to the poly disk here and select the, with shift select, the cylinder and then you press the key F8 which switches on component mode and now you can select for example all the uh, vertices here and all the vertices here and one vertex here vertex here and then you go to constraint component to component it's much stiffer now because we have this object right in the center of the scene working on one, two, three or whatever, maybe 50 points here. 
So it's much smoother now, much more quiet. Well, the background image, very simple. Um, it's a sky dome light here, which sits in the back of the scene. And I mapped an HDR image to it. The HDR image is that one. I don't know where it came from. It's a free image and it uh, works quite lovely for sunny afternoon situations or noon situations. And uh, especially for, you don't need to introduce some blue background, or whatever, if you just use the sky here or you could use the stairs here. The reason for this whole background Im image is that it uh, works on the ribbon on the shader of the ribbon, which is, as I said uh, earlier, a balloon shader, which is just a lovely shader, which uh, shows its real strengths once you have a full volume, like a, like a balloon, for example, and not just a ribbon. So the end constraints work very nicely with uh, the end cloth, and the end cloth works in harmony with the end hair. Bye.